Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School for August 20th, 2023. And we are in session six of a series of six speaking and learning about being set apart for a life for God. Uh, session one was set apart uh, talking about the holiness of God who was set apart. And then session two was set apart by our Lord and Savior. And then session three was set apart but not alone because we have the Holy Spirit that lives in us. And then session uh, four was set apart uh, in the way that we think. In other words, when we're saved, our minds should be renewed and we should change the way we think to be more like our Lord and Savior. And last week, we talked about set apart in the way that we live. And of course, that is through the sanctification process where we become more and more like our Savior and want to serve Him. And then our lesson today is set apart for the journey. And growing in our Lord and Savior in the knowledge of Him is a lifelong journey. It is the sanctification process that we start when we're saved and it goes on until we die, till we take our last breath and then our soul goes to be with our Lord and Savior and our body will follow on. So we are set apart, we are to be different than the world. We are to love each other. We are to serve each other. We are to stand firm for the Lord. So in our world today, we have a world that lives for instant gratification. If we need something, we can go down to the local Walmart or, or Lowe's or, you know, whatever, and buy what we need, or we can go online and have it delivered the next day. And when things don't happen the way that we want them to, uh, there is frustration. So we still battle with sin and with the replacing of bad habits for good ones, for new ones. So we should strive to be ever moving forward in our walk with Christ. In other words, the way that we live every day, the way that we serve him. And the scripture that we're going to use comes from the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 21. Now, this book was written by Paul from prison 
sometime uh, around A.D. 60 to even up to 64 because he was in prison actually twice there. Uh, and he was writing to the church there at Philippi uh, because of the things that were going on uh, there in that city. The Christians, they were being, they were being persecuted and they were getting, uh, getting threats from the Judaizers who were saying you can't be saved unless you're circumcised and there just was other problems that were going on. Yet with all of these difficulties there in the church and also that Paul had while he was in prison the book has a, a lot of passion and a lot of joy and uh, it can serve as a mini guide to discipleship. So let's pray. Our Lord and God, we again thank you like we do every week that we can look into your word and that we have the Holy Spirit that helps us understand, helps us learn and grow so that we're on that journey to become more like your son. And so we ask that you would guide us so that we understand how you want us to live and not only understand it, but to live it every day. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior. So in the book of, in the book of, Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, Paul said this, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that, I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He is speaking about sanctification and that it is an ongoing way of life to be more like our Lord and Savior. He was saying to keep on keeping on for the cause of Christ. Keep on serving. Don't stop. He had already uh, said what his goal was back in verse 10. And it is that I may know him, which is Christ, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. So 
he was saying that he wasn't there yet. He hadn't gotten to the final day when he would be done with the sanctification process. He was still working towards that. And he would work as hard as he could to be set apart to be used by our Lord and Savior and to learn more and more about him and to live more like him. So he was saying that he was he was not completely sanctified yet, but he was working on it. He was following after it. Many years ago when I was uh, I was working, I would drive for an hour to and from work and I would listen to uh, several different preachers and one of them was named Curtis Hudson and he had been uh, a man who worked in the post office and uh, after several years there, he was saved. He became a preacher. And in this sermon, uh, he was humble. He was very, you know, humble. He said, I worked in the post office and I didn't always put the right letter in the right box you know he was saying i wasn't there yet i wasn't you know fully trained but he also said that he was on a journey he was going to serve until his very last breath that he wasn't going to quit, that he was going to do everything that he could to preach and be more and more like his Savior. So Paul was saying, have that same you know, kind of drive that same kind of you know wanting to reach that goal and so we should pursue that with all of our being and the goal of course is to know christ better and to be more like him every day And, and again, he said that he didn't count himself to be there yet. He wasn't hiding, you know, from the truth. But he says, this one thing I do, I forget the things in the past, and I reach forth for the things in the future. And if you recall, Paul had a, a lot uh, to be sorry for, for the way that he persecuted the church and you know, went out of his way to put them 
in jail or even, even to have them stoned. But he said, don't brood over your past sins and your errors. Reach uh, for that goal of advancing to holiness. And don't let anything get in your way. He knew he was headed to heaven, which would be his forever home and ours also. And he wanted the people that he was writing to to have that same goal. And heaven is the prize that he was talking about the high calling in our Lord and Savior. God is going to call all of us that are saved to heaven. And it's a call that is divine. So in, in Christ that he talks about here are words that seal the promise of heaven for all saved people because Jesus died and rose again and he is the only way to heaven which we find in John 14, 6, Acts 4, 12, 1 Timothy 2, 5. Now, Paul goes on in uh, verses 15 through 19, and he wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that there are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. So, spiritual Spiritual growing up is what we should be as we get older and as we understand more about who God is and what he wants us uh, to do. So, Paul was saying that I declare that I depend on the Lord Jesus for everything. There in chapter 3, verses 7 through 14. So he was saying, I'm not perfect. I'm not complete yet. But he was confident that he could ask these people at this church there in Philippi to adopt his thoughts about sanctification and they would keep on growing and learning more becoming a mature follower 
of our Lord and Savior. So, he went on to say that uh, there were these Judaizers there at the church that were saying that in order to be saved, you had to be circumcised. But Paul said no, that that is adding to what the Word of God says, that you only need to confess that you are a sinner and you need a savior and you ask Jesus to come into your heart and to be your savior and that is all that you need. So, Here is what it, it takes uh, to, uh, to get along with your other brothers and your sisters there in the church you needed to understand and we need to understand these basic Bible doctrines about the creation. God spoke and he formed the worlds about sin. We all sin. About salvation. Christ came to save us and gave us the exact way that, that we can be saved. The virgin birth, if, if that didn't happen, we would not have anything. And the Word of God being inspired by the Holy Spirit. If we have this and the second coming of our Lord and Savior to take us home to be with Him, these are the things that, that we can rest upon. And there are other things that we don't need to fight about or to cause problems with. And so that's why this was a serious uh, situation with the Judaizers. <clears throat> so there were a lot of people in the church that were walking the walk. They were doing what the Lord asked them to do in the way that they lived. So their walk matched their talk, but it didn't match with the Judaizers, and that was the stand that they should take. So Paul was saying, you know me, I was there to help, help you start the church, and I am writing to you uh, to follow me because I follow the Lord 
and I do my very best to show you how that you ought to live. So those are the people that we need to seek out in the church. And Paul uh, was very hurt. He was mournful. He wept about the problems that were being caused by the Judaizers and others that were hostile uh, uh, to the Christians. And in, in those days, especially there, it was very dangerous to be a new Christian. And we see that in our world today. And so there are, there are people led by Satan and his demons that are enemies of the cross. But Paul said that these selfish people, these shameful people, in the end, they would be destructed. And their God is their belly. They're after their own evil desires and the sinful nature of the flesh. And so they were doing shameful deeds. And Paul says that they were guilty because heaven was not not what they wanted. And he goes on in verses 20 and 21 and says this, for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Spiritual growth is not fully complete until we get to heaven and we're glorified where we will be changed again. Our bodies will be glorified. There will be no pain. There will be no sorrow because our bodies will be like our Lord and Savior. So we should understand if we're saved that we are on our way to heaven and that we should be serving and we should be learning more and more and sharing uh, and spending time reading and also worshiping our Lord. And when it comes down to it, the church there at Philippi uh, 
is uh, a lot like our churches today. We shall have the same have the same kind of problems, but we will have a new body. Our earthly bodies here will always have pain, sorrow, and death. Organ transplants, uh, have our lungs replaced, our heart replaced, there we will be changed. And our bodies will be like our Savior's, His glorious body. So, He encouraged them about the hope of being in heaven with, with Jesus and having bodies that will never, ever uh, fall apart. So we will be able to worship him and praise him and cast our crowns at at his feet because God in the words that we read here is able to subdue all things unto himself he is supernatural and God is eternal, he's powerful, and ener energetic in, in action. So he can and will subdue all things. Everyone and everything are under God's arrangement and subject to his plan. Nothing that they were going through in that church would take God by surprise. And the same thing with us. The song uh, that is peace in the valley, the second verse says that the bear shall be gentle and the lion shall lay down with the lamb and the beast from the wild will be led by a child and I will be changed from this creature that I am. Our souls go to be with the Lord the instant that we die. And, and later on, our bodies will come and they will be restored and we will be changed and it will be a glorious body like our savior so the christian life is not a sprint it isn't over when we're saved it's a marathon and it lasts until 
our last breath. So it's a journey. It's an ongoing thing. And if there is an area in our life where we have stopped growing, we need to seek forgiveness and ask for grace so that we can we can continue to grow and then it would be good to find someone that is more mature than we are to help us in our walk with Christ and then we can also find others that we can help in their walk. So, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the sanctification and the process that we go through. We ask uh, for your guidance from the Holy Spirit that as we read your word and understand it, that we will use it in our everyday life. Lord, help us to be strong in our willingness to learn and grow and to be more like you. As we read your word, as we hear your word as it's preached, Lord, may it enter our heart and our mind and we see our need to serve you. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.